It's so lovely to have you here, Judith. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you um, for having me. Lovely. Do you want to introduce yourself to the Basis with Boobs community who might not know who you are? They might not know. Um, well, I, I'm a double bass player. I trained at the Guildhall School of Music and um, I now teach at the Royal College of Music and the Junior Academy as an Alexander teacher. And I still play a little bit, but my main drive is sort of uh, working in well-being and embodiment uh, connected to music. So that's beautiful. As well as that, I'm married to the beautiful Peter Buckoak. And I have two sons, two lovely boys, and a dog called Vespa. Ah, that's me. What would you say? a bit of your musical journey when you were younger how would you describe the start of your musical journey yeah that that was a really interesting question to have a think about because um it came about in a kind of mad way my my mum was an actress and she was going to have some clothes made and we went along and um where where the woman who made the clothes uh, lived there was a pianist who lived upstairs and she um, came down one time when I was there and said would you like to learn to play the piano and so I, I said yeah great and then um, it turned out she was also a bass player uh, she was called Sally Rowe and she became Sally Green and um, she was very beautiful and very very accomplished and it was great because playing the piano was nice. I, you know, I wasn't that great at the piano, but playing the bass, you know, suddenly you were in orchestras and there were lovely people to connect to and a bigger, a bigger repertoire. So I just loved it. And I guess like you guys, there was youth orchestras. I was very lucky. I had a good one locally called the Harrow Youth Orchestra. I went very, very fortunate as well. I was in the National Youth Orchestra. And then I went to the Guildhall and I was just lucky guys because, you know, my career kind of took off pretty quickly. I, I was pretty fortunate to start freelancing and then getting jobs. And yeah, it was really, really a good time. A little bit different from these times, I think. <laughs> what do you think? like leading on quite nicely from that point the highlights of your career or the highlights of your early career because obviously you have different things you're doing now but yeah. from the base point of view early on what do you think some of your standout memories are? I was very very fortunate to um, play with some fantastic orchestras and great conductors. I played with the LSO and I Played, I had a job with the English National Opera, which was just wonderful. And I then think sort of some of the standout things started to be moving into the Baroque world. I guess some of you guys are doing that these days. I was uh, entranced by playing for um, Roger Norrington. He was extraordinary. And I, the other thing that I was very interested in at your age was dance. And he sort of brought dance and music together. And he really brought that understanding of movement and pulse and rhythm uh, and, and a sort of sense of community into playing. It was, it was very wonderful. A um, couple of other highlights, I was very lucky, did some big tours. Uh, of the world obviously it was a different time we could all travel and um and i think also as i got more confident and got to know myself more and found my own voice i started to play uh, in smaller groups and started to do some solo playing and that was that was really great sort of feeling comfortable enough to say here i am and this is what i do and and this is my repertoire and that kind of thing yeah <laughs> I don't know what the other girls think but I think that's interesting like with what we're trying to help with as well and I guess develop in our own playing and mm. it's making ourselves feel comfortable enough to 
put ourselves out there and that's what well so many musicians struggle with and I'm sure that you do this so much with Alex Tech as well I think uh, it's also very interesting the order of events you know I think right now solo playing comes so early on in everyone's musical yeah. training it's interesting to hear that you found your your solo sound and that kind of world being explored later on. Yeah, you'd be surprised at probably almost entry level repertoire was what I was playing for my final recital probably. Um, but uh, I was very lucky as well. I think I came along at about the time that women were starting to uh, play the bass. And I'd like to mention, you know, there were, I was so lucky to be at college with some awesome, uh, unbelievably lovely women, as well as great players, um, Mandy McNamara, Heather Swinburne, and to be playing alongside, you know, Chi Chi, who is obviously a legend, um, and really uh, Judith, you know, all sorts of amazing people and, and great composers coming along. I was very lucky to be friendly with some wonderful women composers like Judith Weir and people who would write, write things for you that was just incredible to think back to. But I, I'd also like to mention, talking about finding your voice really in your own repertoire, there was you know, there were some fantastic solo women out there. Bronwyn Nash, I don't know if you guys have heard of her. She was a Welsh uh, player, very, very accomplished. But I had a sort of, you know, light bulb moment one time when um, I went to a concert with, uh, and Joel Leandro was playing. And it was like, wow, this is what it could be. You know, she came on in black leather. She was really beautiful. <laughs> and she played this really theatrical, modern repertoire. And it was like, wow, that's, that's what it interested me really deeply in terms of solo playing. And it was the start of repertoire like um, failing and, and really, really theatrical, wonderful, where, where the bass could shine but not pretend to be the violin, really. It's really, it's really interesting to just hear about, like, especially in when, like you were saying, like, because, you know, when you were playing bass, um, like, in that kind of era, it was like, it's a very, like you said, like, it's a very different, like, world to what it is right now. And, like, I found it so interesting when you were saying stuff about, like, you know, um, what was the name of the soloist, actually? The, um, Oh, oh yeah. yeah, I mean, she she's probably still around. Joelle Leandra. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, sorry. Yes, Joe. Yeah, yeah. No, we've heard of her. And and Bronwyn Nash. And you know, when I was your age, really, nearly every time I played in a section, uh, in a big orchestral section, I would be the only uh, woman. Um, but I was very lucky again to play in chamber groups where. Um, there were people, amazing players like Linda Horton and people, to, other women bass players who, who were fantastic to sit next to. And, you know, it, there was a, a sense of it growing, the sense of women playing the bass. But in the big orchestras, it was still pretty prehistoric, really. <laughs> I, I guess leading on from that, um, you've probably already answered it. The what do you think motivated you at this stage when your that career was starting off? And you've already mentioned that these like kind of solo performances inspired you. Do you think that something inspired you to then change your career over slightly, or what do you think motivated you at this stage? Well, I think it for me it was always um, the music and the sound. I mean. It's just an incredible career to be involved in, isn't it? And I think, I mean, I was just really uh, interested in, in finding a way to be myself and to not be frightened of performing. And I think that motivated me to carry on. I, I sort of knew I had potential, even as an orchestral player, but something was holding me back really and and 
and I needed to un unravel that unknot the the things that were getting in my way. I think it was very helpful to meet my husband. Obviously, he was uh, inspirational um, and a really brilliant example of an alpha male who's a feminist. <laughs> so that was really helpful uh, because there aren't even now there aren't that many of those around. He was he was great. So I think my motivation came from community music, but also how do I find my comfortable, easy, confident self in this um, in this music world? <laughs> and how did you um, find that? What would you say to the the younger bass players who are struggling to find that kind of confidence? I would say primarily i think this is really important and i know you guys know it but i think it's very important to find your repertoire uh, to not feel you have to endlessly with deep respect <laughs> play botticini although it's wonderful and uh, it's great but to really find the the repertoire that actually connects with you. And sometimes that might take you more into a jazzy world or, you know, uh, other realms, I think. Um, but I, I think for me, it was the work of embodiment. It's a, it's a great question. I was, again, I was lucky. There was Alexander at the Guildhall and I started to get really interested. And both Peter and I were very interested in how to embody playing without pain <laughs> and we it's a journey you know of course it's um, a journey of getting comfortable having the skill of how to connect with yourself and your breath and 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 so we both trained to be alexander teachers and then began to find uh, as you know that really what what is stopping most people's potential is anxiety and how to really be in charge of that and feel like you can have your feet on the floor your sitting bones on the double bass stool <laughs> and 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 not wrap yourself around the instrument in a way that is not good for your structure or your uh, as we said as we've all said self-confidence Something that you've mentioned as well is you're kind of looking at emotional intelligence as well within your work at the moment. What do you mean by that? If someone was to come to you and say, I have no idea what that means, what would you tell them? Yeah, that's a great question because, again, it's it's ongoing work, isn't it? You know, to sort of be the best you that you can be. But I think, I mean, I sometimes jokingly say that these music colleges are like, you know, the colleges of trauma and anxiety. And we have to remember that they're the Royal College or the Royal Birmingham College of Music. You know, it's about music and it isn't, you know, it's sort of set up to be a bit of a competition, our world and exam orientated. And, you know, it, would just be ridiculous to think of other art forms in that way. We really need, especially as young women and women of a certain age, to think of each other as friends and to think of each other as, um, you know, really supportive and allowing each other to shine. And I think understanding that has really changed things for me over the years to be happy for other people to do well but really really uh able to shine in my way that's fine too you know i don't have to i don't have to sort of be a wilting lily you know i i have my quiet strength and confidence to be me <laughs> I, think I think one of the things that we've talked about quite a lot in previous um interviews and stuff and even to our followers and stuff is um the idea that we don't that there isn't just one spot for one woman in a section etc and um, things are changing and we don't have to be 
of course, being competitive is great and stuff to an extent, but we're not competing with each other for one spot. Absolutely. And that everyone should help each other. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it's, yeah, I think that is emotional intelligence that you sort of find a resilience and an agency around who you are. And I think being really digging deep into your creativity and what it really is to own your musical skills and your, your movement is, it makes all the difference. It made all the difference to me, just silly little thing, like just, well, not a little thing, big thing really, but just remembering to breathe when I played, you know, not, not hold my breath. It was, it was really helpful. <laughs> I think every, everything you've said is so inspiring to everyone. It's exactly what we stand for. And I think the, the world needs more Judith, I think uh -huh. is the <laughs> bottom line of this. Um, is, is there anything you would like to finish with? I think you've been already really inspiring, but to the current generation of musicians, kind of our age or studying or people thinking maybe the profession isn't for me because I don't really fit there. What would you say to them? Mm. I would say, um, really, it doesn't matter what gender you are, or what race you are, or what size you are, or how you look. It's a much deeper element of being human connecting to music, sound and uh, creating sound is it's just such an incredible thing to be involved with and life changing really uh, when we hear a sound our whole self can change and I think it's remembering to connect to being a musician whatever you're doing wherever you are in the world that's the thing connect to the music is what I'd say and of course it's wonderful to each other yeah well thank you so much for asking me thank you for coming that was so wonderful and we can't wait for everyone to hear it well, honestly thank you Gina so much that was so inspiring you put into words exactly what needs to be said um and it's just it's so great to hear about like all your experiences and also just just all of it it's just so like it's so encouraging to hear and I can see it from the both of the other girls' faces like it's just so inspiring to hear so thank you for doing this with us very so good. lovely to meet you oh thank what you. an incredible journey <laughs> thank you very much